Reid in the appeals, HMRC and the Investment Trust companies. Lord Reid will explain the judgment of the court. We regret that it has taken much longer than usual for us to deliver our judgment in this case. However, the issues in the case are linked to those in the case of Loic Rose, in which judgment will be given shortly. That case was heard some months after this case, but it was known to be on its way when the judgment in this case was prepared. Accordingly, it was decided to postpone the delivery of judgment in this case until Loic Rose had been heard and considered, and the parties were informed of that position. This appeal and cross-appeal arise out of claims made by a number of investment trust companies for refunds of VAT, which they paid on the supply of services by investment managers. The VAT transpired not to be due because the supplies in question were exempt from VAT under EU law. The managers who received VAT from the investment trust companies paid part of it to the commissioners, but retained the remainder of it, believing that they were owed by the commissioners the amount of a VAT which they had themselves paid on supplies which they received for the purposes of their business, as they would have been if their business was liable to VAT. Out of a notional £100 received from the investment trust companies, the managers paid the commissioners only £75 and retained the remaining £25. Those figures, of course, are purely notional. The actual figures are very much larger. When it transpired that the supplies to the investment trust companies were exempt from VAT, the managers claimed refunds from the commissioners under a statutory scheme for refunds contained in the VAT Act of 1994. And they passed on the refunded VAT and interest to the investment trust companies. Under the statutory scheme, the managers were only entitled to a refund of the VAT that they had actually paid to the commissioners, that's to say, the notional £75, and not the £25 which they had received from the investment trust companies, but retained in their own hands. In addition, the managers could not claim refunds of VAT uh, under the statutory scheme if the VAT had been paid more than three years previously because of a three-year limitation period or time bar under the statutory scheme. And so the investment trust companies did not receive back via the statutory scheme the full amount of the VAT that they had been mistakenly charged. They then brought proceedings against the commissioners, claiming that they were entitled to be paid by the commissioners the notional £25 retained by the managers, and also the VAT which had not been refunded to the managers because of the statutory time bar. The investment trust companies based their claim on the common law, uh, relying on the principle of unjust enrichment, and also on EU law. The judge found that the commissioners had been enriched by the full amount of the VAT which the investment trust companies paid to the managers, including the notional £25 which the managers retained. But he also found that the investment trust company's cause of action at common law was excluded by the statutory scheme. In his view, EU law, however, required that exclusion to be disapplied so as to permit a claim to be made, but still subject to the statutory time bar. So the claim in relation to the time barred periods was dismissed but the commissioners were ordered to pay the notional £25 outside uh, the time-barred periods. Both sides appealed, and the Court of Appeal allowed both appeals. In their view, the statutory scheme did not exclude a common law claim, but it was wrong to treat the commissioners as having been enriched to the extent of a notional £100 when they had only received £75. They considered that there was no claim against the commissioners under EU law for the remaining £25 retained by the managers, and so they gave judgment for the notional £75 in relation to the time-barred periods, but they dismissed the claim for the notional £25. Both sides have now appealed to the Supreme Court. The court unanimously allows the commissioners' appeal and dismisses the cross-appeal by the investment trust companies. In relation to the claim based on unjust enrichment, the commissioner's enrichment was limited to the notional £75 which they received from the managers. 
It did not include the £25 which the managers retained because that was not an amount which the commissioners owed to the managers. It would only have been owed if the manager's business was liable to VAT, and the whole issue arises from the fact that it was, in fact, VAT exempt. Furthermore, the commissioner's enrichment was not in any event at the expense of the investment trust companies. As a general rule, the court considers that there has to be a direct transfer of value from the claimant to the defendant or a situation equivalent to a direct transfer in order for a benefit to the defendant to be at the claimant's expense. In the present case, there was no direct transfer of value from the investment trust companies to the commissioners or any equivalent. The investment trust companies' transactions with the managers, on the one hand, and the managers' transactions with the commissioners, on the other hand, were separate and cannot be collapsed into a single transfer of value from the investment trust companies to the commissioners. Even if the investment trust companies had in principle been able to make out a claim in unjust enrichment, such a claim would, in any event, the court holds, have been excluded by the statutory scheme for refunds, which the court holds is intended to be exclusive of common law remedies. Finally, the court finds that the application of the statutory scheme in the present case is compatible with EU law. The final result is that the commissioners do not have to pay any more than was refunded in accordance with the statutory scheme. <coughs>